In this video, I'm going to look at the research regarding red light therapy and Achilles injuries. Specifically, we'll look at Achilles tendonitis or tendinopathy, as well as Achilles tendon tears. Now, the questions I have is, one, is it useful for either of those? Two, what are the settings that's best to use if it is useful? And three, what are the safety concerns? What things do we need to keep in mind? For those of you who don't know me, my name is Marika. I'm one of the physiotherapists from TreatMyAchilles.com, where you can get online physiotherapy assessment as well as treatment of any type of Achilles injury, all done via video call. Now, I realize that sounds weird because aren't we meant to be touching you to assess you or treat you? But it actually works really well via video call because we can see you move. If you want to know more about the service, have a look at the description of this video. I'll put a link to our website there and we discuss in detail how we treat, how we can assess and how it all works there. How does red light therapy work? Or in other words, how does it manage to actually improve healing if it does? The first important thing to know is that it uses red light or near infrared light. It doesn't use infrared light. And this is important. We'll get back to this later on because infrared light devices don't actually work. Then What's been seen in studies where they've looked at animal models or also in single cells that's in petri dishes in the lab, they've seen that it stimulates the mitochondria within the cell. Now, your mitochondria is your energy producing structure inside the cell. And the more energy you can produce, the better the healing process. But it's also been shown to modulate the inflammatory response. Why is that important? Well, for certain conditions, like for instance, when you have a Achilles tendon tear, inflammation plays a very important part of the healing process, especially during the early stages. But if you have excessive inflammation, it can actually do the opposite and be bad for healing. So red light therapy seems to modulate it that you just have the correct amount of um, or a beneficial amount of inflammation that it's not excessive. Then it's also been shown to help with pain, and they think it does this via two pathways. One is that it stimulates the nerve endings to calm them down, and also it releases endorphins, which may help reduce your pain. And there's also some evidence that it can improve blood flow and circulation to injured areas. Now, this all sounds really positive, so why am I still wondering if it'll work? Well, we know from previous studies and other types of devices and things that what works really well in a Petri dish, in a lab laboratory, doesn't necessarily work that well on a re real human with a specific injury. So we've got to look at the research on people with Achilles tendonitis or tendinopathy as well as tears specifically. Now, if you've watched any of our other videos, you will know by now that Achilles tendonitis or tendinopathy is an overuse injury. And it basically causes the tendon to become super sensitive and it can also cause it to lose some strength over time. And this then means that your regular activities annoys it because it's not really strong enough to cope with them. And then that just builds the pain cycle. So successful treatment plans usually involves two main categories of things. One is to look at how can we reduce the pain. And it's not just about rest. There's lots of things in there, as well as how can we restore the strength of the tendon so that it can cope with your normal activities. What does the research show for red light therapy and Achilles tendonitis or tendinopathy recovery? Well, it's a little bit of a mixed bag. Some studies show that yes, red light therapy seemed to help to reduce pain, especially in the early stages, and may help improve your rehab outcomes during those first few months. But there doesn't seem to be a massive functional benefit um, to it. And they advise that you don't use it as a standalone treatment. You definitely still need the rehab to restore the strength. But like I said, it's a mixed bag. There's also other studies, especially there's one review that looked at all the research out there that show that, yes, it can perhaps reduce the pain a little bit in those early months. But by month three or anywhere between three and 12, that benefit that you had kind of equals out that the people who didn't use the red light therapy has similar results to the ones that did. The other thing to point out is that this review said that the studies they did find with regards to this wasn't of a very high quality. So it means the studies could have had factors in them that influenced the results to either be more negative or more positive. So we need a lot more high quality research 
to know specifically if red light therapy is super useful for tendinopathy or tendinitis. But in the meantime, I would say what the research does show is if you use it in a sensible way, there's no bad side effects from it. And if pain is really stopping you from progressing with your rehab, then using a red light therapy device can be beneficial. So I guess the takeaway for tendinopathy is that it's not a magic fix, but it could be helpful to reduce your pain. There's very little research out there that looks at red light therapy um, for Achilles tendon tears and how that compares to treatments without that. In one randomized control trial where they looked at they gave people after the tear the same rehab plan, and then they added real red light therapy to this group, and this group got placebo red light therapy. So they thought they were getting it. It looked the same, but it wasn't of the right frequency. And what they found was both groups improved with rehab, as expected, and their function was similar at around three, three to four months' time. And to be honest, there wasn't really a big difference. The group that got the real red light therapy perhaps had a bit less pain during the early stages, but again, it wasn't that significant. So the takeaway here is that we need a lot more research before we can actually say how useful it is or whether it's useful at all. But if you have a lot of pain after your Achilles tendon rupture, it may be a useful adjunct to just help calm your pain down. However, for especially for Achilles tendon tears, your rehab plan is the most important part of the whole treatment for that. Red light therapy appears to be safe because it doesn't cause heat. If your device is causing heat, it's not a red light therapy device. It is likely an infrared heat lamp. But yes, because it doesn't cause heat, it can't lead to burns. And the only real bad effect it can have is if you overtreat. And it's not bad because it burns you. It's just that if you overtreat with red light therapy, you have the opposite effect that it actually leads to poorer healing. It's called a biphasic dose response. So I will discuss the best dosages in a minute. It's really worth sticking to that and not just whacking it on as often as possible. Other things to consider is that red light can be bad for your eyes. So it's best not to shine it directly into your eyes or use protectors if your device says you should. And also, if you have any active cancer or you're using medications that makes you very photosensitive, so sensitive to light, you need to speak to your doctor first. Because with regards to cancer, red light therapy can make the cancer grow better because it does that. It gives more energy to things. Um, but this is not that if you don't have cancer, it's bad to use. It's just if you have active cancer. And also with photosensitivity, obviously your skin is more likely to react to red light therapy then. So it might not be the best thing to use. There is definitely a beneficial dose when it comes to red light therapy. Like I mentioned before, if you overtreat, you can actually have the opposite effect and inhibit the healing proce process. The first thing to look at is what type of light your device emits. Now, the useful type of light that can bring about the healing response is either red light or near infrared light. It's not infrared. So you're looking for either a, a low level laser device or a LED lamp that gives off red light, not a infrared lamp. If your device is causing heat, then it's using infrared um, light. And that's not the one that helps for healing. If you're wondering how often you can use it, well, in the research where they had positive results, they were using it for four to six weeks in total because tendons take a very long time to heal. And they were doing two to three sessions, but never two days in a row. They had a rest day in between to prevent overtreatment. The wavelength of your device tells you what type of light it's emitting. Now, if you're finding all of this very technical that's going to follow, have a look at the description of this video. I'm going to put a link to the blog article I wrote about this in there. And seeing it written out may make a bit more sense. But with regards to wavelength, the wavelength determines how deep the light goes into the structure you're treating. Red light has a wavelength of around 660 nanometers. And that can penetrate only really superficially. Now, your Achilles tendon is quite close under the skin, so that may be enough. But if you want to get to the thicker portions that's close to your ankle joint, then you may need a, infra, uh, a near infrared device where the, the wavelength is around 830 or 800 to 830 nanometers, because that goes a little bit deeper. The good news is that most modern machines 
actually emits both types of this wavelength. So it doesn't matter which one you use, you use, you should be able to cover both um, all bases. And I will put links to in the description to different devices that I found that actually has the correct specifications that I'm going to talk about. So if you want to see examples, have a look at the description of this video. The last two things that could be useful to look at when you're considering to buy a device is the irradiance as well as the amount of energy it delivers. Irradiance is just the power output when the light hits your skin, how intense the light is. And the energy level is what is actually delivered when you use the uh, lamp or the, the device in the way that the manufacturer tells you to do. Your irradiance is measured in watts per square centimeter and your energy is measured in joules per square centimeter. Now, don't worry, this can get really technical. The manufacturer usually tells you how to use it in a sensible way, but I've also written it all out in a blog post as I mentioned before, and the link is in the description. Irradiance that was useful in the studies seemed to be between 10 to 30 milliwatts per square centimeter. And if people went above that, you may end up over-treating. And for energy delivery, they were looking for around 4 to 10 joules per treatment session. There's a way that you can then use this information to work out for how long you should be treating for, and I've written that out in the blog post. Brilliant, hope you found that useful. Now remember, if you need more help with an injury, you're welcome to consult one of the team via video call. Link is in the description of the video. And if you've got any questions, just ask them in the comments. Take care.